Hey, you're listening to Commander Cookout Podcast, episode 190. I'm Brando. I'm here with Ryan, and we're going to continue the arc of the good vibes by doing a deck that's just a little bit better than last week. Now, hit our theme song! Hey, Ryan. We're back for yet another whirlwind adventure. How you doing? Good. What is going down? whole ton is going down we're back in the separate studios you are in the cco remote studio up at the lake having a great time out there with the fam jam we're going to talk about a deck that's much like last week but entirely different we're going to thank some new people who have joined the nation we're going to have a great time but before we do any of that we have to thank our official sponsors face to face games.com they're canada's biggest magic store Very much so. I've got my orders in the mail. You know how you get the notification that they've shipped? I am excited. I forgot to order a a, a card, and it was like four days later, so I couldn't combine two orders. So I've got two orders coming, one with a bunch of cards, and then one with uh, one fucking card. Oh, (laughs) yeah. I hate that. I did the same thing, but I remembered it while I was walking the dogs. Like, I made the order before I left the house, and then while I was walking the dog, I made the other one. So hopefully they will ship together, but we'll see. Oh, yeah, usually they're good. You're just, like, in the comments to the vendor or whatever, you just, like, ordered this two hours ago. Please combine with order number XYZ123. Yeah, we'll see. Sometimes they do it, sometimes they don't. It's th- There was a painful order. It's four cards, and they're all foils for Norin, and I don't want to talk about how much I had to sink into that. You're probably going to cut them anyways. No, not these ones. No, these are good ones. What? Okay, well, what what cards are they? Just so we have an idea of your pain. Uh, Fire and Emancipation, uh, extended Ooh. art foil. Ooh, yep. Uh, Conspicuous Snoop foil. Mm, that's going in Norin. Yep. Oh, because you play and Kiki Jiki in there, right? I do. Yeah. And what was the other one? There was one more. But I can't think of what it was. Oh, no, the other one was just a card for Omnath. It is the new Rata uh, extended art foil. So she wasn't too bad. But, whew. And then I forgot to pre-order my Muxus, which oh, I know I shouldn't do. Lord, but I, do not but I, buy do not whoa. buy Jumpstart singles right now. Unless you're going to face-to-face to games.com, Canada's biggest magic store, of course. Yes, yes. Oh, I was going to get some of those Allosaurus shamans too, but, like, fuck that noise. Yeah, those are crazy expensive. I guess because it's Jumpstart. Like, lots of retailers were shorted on Jumpstart product, or it was delayed or whatever, right? And because there's so many different, different, like, half-deck packs that you shuffle together, there's so many different ones, there's no guarantee that you're going to get what you want when you open packs, right? And and if you do get the, the deck that you want... You know, you're not guaranteed to get the card that you want. Like, you could get a goblin one that doesn't have a Muxus in it. Because there's, like, two different goblin decks that you could get, right? Yeah, so, like, it's it's a it's a real crapshoot with Jumpstart. There's some amazing cards in there, but, oh, man, like, the... Oh, so oh I think hey, that, well, I got, I got this. Stuff. Check this out. You got a card that you wanted when I was over at your house getting some playmats signed. I did not. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> you got the elf yeah. package and got the Oracle of Moldaya and I got the I got the tree folk package that it got had nothing. <laughs> yeah, I don't even remember what the rare was. We probably just threw it away. Oh man. No, I kept I I put I snuck it into your good pile just to troll you. <laughs> 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 but hey, you know, we were we got the last of our playmats signed. We have sold out of playmats. Big thank you to the last four or five people that that wanted to support in the nation. We very much appreciate it. All that of the so playmats cool. are gone. That's so cool, as Brando says. Those really help us with either travel to events, they fund prizes, they fund the the fucking massive bill that we just had for website hosting and our back like keeping our backlog all posted all that storage space costs money the website costs money the the owning commandercookout.com costs money so all of that happens to us in at the end of june like the last weekend in june so that's why we did the little bit of the playmat blitz to get the rest of them out and cco nation clutch when it counts as always came through for us yeah now hell now, yeah now all we have to do is sell like 500 more stickers and a whole stack of coasters so if anybody <laughs> wants to go to commandercookocom slash store there's still stuff available and we're working on 
you know, some ideas, some behind the scenes stuff to get more merch because people are always asking about hats and shirts and sleeves and dice. And, you know, we, we, we think our logo fits onto things that are square like dice and coasters really well. So we're going to continue to look at stuff because people keep asking. Yes, I concur. Yeah, very much. <laughs> yeah. We are doing that. Thanks, Brando. <laughs> yeah, no, no problem. Would would we put the CCO logo on the one or the six? Oh, what are you supposed to do? I think you put it on the. S- I think it goes I, on the one, doesn't it? Well, I don't know because usually I think it's on the six, and then, but there's only one logo, so you know what I mean. Yeah, so I don't know. I think it would be fine on either. I think it was, I don't know. Put on the two. Yeah, I was just going to say, I've got trick dice that have no one and no six. They got two threes and two fours. <laughs> They're probably not trick dice. They're probably for a game. They're probably a fucking Warhammer dice. Yeah, it could be. When we roll, when we do high roll, I always give that dice to my opponent because the odds are like he's going to roll a, like a two or a three. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll roll like a, I could, I could roll a one on a regular dice, but I could also roll a six. Yes, you have the chance to win. The ceiling is very high on a yeah. regular oh, dice baby. as opposed to a rigged one. Oh, king of the segways. We have a high ceiling, low basement deck today. Give us give us the oh. commander so everybody knows. So everybody who just tuned in to see if they won the, the guessing game for that survival of the fittest playmat that we showed off on the pre-show. Just, oh. just give us a read. All right, we got the 25 cent wonder himself. Chronicles reprint himself. Yeah, from Time Spiral, Sulkinar the Swamp King, the 5-5 five, five, blue, black, red, 2 Swamp Walker. Whenever opponent plays a black spell, you gain a life. So he's a demon horn on legs, baby. Oh, oh baby, I cannot <laughs> wait. And this this deck comes by way of preferred deck list channel on our Discord from patron supporter Cam Girl McLift. That's a great name. I don't know if it's like a meme deck. Does he actually play this? It it really looks like a pile of stuff that he had. No, he one hundred percent put this together just so he could tell, like, show people the deck, right? Like you show it to him with the, you can't see it with the with the commander, and he says it's what we're gonna say it is in a minute. I don't want to spoil it, and then everybody goes, oh. And then he starts playing it and everybody laughs. That's that's what this is. Well, you know what happens is he, everybody's like, it's a meme deck. Oh, you made a meme deck. You're CCO doing another meme deck, whatever, right? Until you sit down and face it and he plops down one of the creatures that we're going to talk about or any myriad number of the creatures we're going to talk about. And then you go, oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> and then you fucking lose. <laughs> So this is Camgirl McLift's Soul Canar Swamp Ass King Land Walk deck. So it's a walker deck. Just like last week, we're doing a Grixis walker deck, but it's not Planeswalkers. It's Land Walkers. Oh, baby. I, <laughs> I cannot wait. But before we get to it, Camgirl McLift's a patron. We've got two other patrons that we want to thank this week. And, of course, when you sign up, you get your CCO nickname in addition to your Discord access. So, first, new patron, Josh Gronky. Oh, that's... He's the Gronk. That's got to be the Gronk, right? Right? Like, pseudo-celebrity, the Gronk. Yeah. We've We've got between, you know, sports professionals and their brothers <laughs> we've probably got an entire professional sports ball team we don't know what sport we'd play but you know we we've could, probably got a lot of good people on the team here we could field the greatest rec football team you've ever seen yeah because we got a lot of pure natural athletes right yeah just people who are just good at sports we got them yeah and we got the gronk welcome and also f you f you indeed Okay, next one, and I'll take the heat because there's no way that either of us can pronounce this name, but we're going to do it anyways. Yeah, that's how, we, that's how we roll here in the nation, Ryan. <laughs> All right, here we go. Big thank you, shout out, and F you to Ramulo Oragio Baraldi. Okay, uh, Ramula Agave Braldecki. 
I wonder if he plays Brawl. <laughs> well, if he does, we're going to educate him on how there's a better format out there he could be playing. And uh, welcome to the Nash. Mr. Brawl Decky. I love Mr. it. Mr. Brawl Decky. You should, you should play Command Decky. He could play this Decky. You should play Swamp Ass King Decky. <laughs> <laughs> Well, welcome. It's great to have you. Ramulo, use any combination of any of the words that we said. <clears throat> I guarantee that everybody on the Discord channel will know who you are. <laughs> okay, so we talked about the survival of the fittest playmat giveaway. We talked about the new patrons. Thank you very much. We said, um, buy stickers, subscribe to the YouTube channel. That's hugely important for us right now. We're trying to build that audience there. And our our videos are a lot of fun. They're not just the podcast with no picture. So check us out. Yeah, we're good at everything we do. Says us. <laughs> yes, we have to say that because otherwise, what are we even doing here? Should we do a deck? I guess. So second week in a row, Grixis deck, Solkanar the Swamp King. Give him a read one more time for the listeners just, just to let us know how terrible he is. Solkanar Swamp King is a swamp walking 5 5 for blue red, black 2, with whenever a player plays a black spell, you gain a life. He has some wicked sick art on him, though. Like, he's got this big fucking club that doesn't look like it has a handle on it, but since his hands are so big, he can just, like, hold it. It's, I don't know, he's, it's pretty cool. It's that old antiquities art. I like it. Yeah, that's that's Richard Kane Ferguson. That's RKF. He does lots of cool stuff. I follow him on Facebook. He does all, like, his sketches and stuff. He posts them all. They're all cool. Neat. He paints in, like, the kind of, like, the attic of an old barn. I saw, like, a little documentary on him one time. He's just, like, you know those old school barns that just have, like, that door that opens up at, at the top of them? There's always yeah. a goat standing up there. Yeah, man. That's where he paints. Is there a goat? Uh, I don't know. Probably. If you, if you ever see Richard Kane Ferguson doing goat art, you know, maybe we go back to Lorwyn and there's a goat <laughs> or like some <laughs> commander product and he got an art for it. Guaranteed, that's the goat that's standing in the attic of his barn. <laughs> I'm with it. I dig it. Yeah. Dig it. Yeah. So, Solkanar has got Swamp Walk. And we've got a bunch of other stuff in the deck that also walks if you will should we start with them we can start with them let's do it we've got custom categories here huge thank you to cam girl mclift for the custom categories they make it very much easy especially when we're recording remote to to tech the deck as we do we're going to start at the bottom of these because we're on architect to just make things easier for me we're going to start with the first walker in rexiel the risen deep oh man what a cool name what a cool art what a cool big ass creature! Never fucking casted it in my whole life, but always wanted yeah. to. Right? Yeah, I've tried. I've tried several times. It's just never worked out for me. But maybe McLift has had it work. I don't know. All right, Rexiel the RD five eight Kraken black blue blue three. He walks the la- he walks the land, the island that is, <laughs> and the swamp land. Whenever he deals combat damage to a player. You may cast target instant or sorcery card from that player's graveyard without paying its mana cost, and then you exile it. Cool. So you get a free spell when he domes you, and he's going to dome somebody because he's going to be unblockable to the island player and the swamp player. And everybody is going to be a swamp player because, spoiler, we are playing an Urborg Tomb of Yawgmoth in here, so that's a thing. Yeah, we're playing a couple things that can switch and change around land types. Another thing that we'll care about that is Woodlot Crawler. Oh, look at the gross art on this. Yeah, that is 100% a dick with legs. Yeah, lots of them. This is Yeah, don't Google Blue Waffle. Don't Google Blue Penis Crawler because that's what that is. 2-1 Forest Walk Protection from Green. So this guy hates all things that are green for black, blue. So little guy, he's going to get in. We're going to do some damage. With, with these types of just little value things that are like limited playable, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of value, we have a Thada Adele Acquisitor. Yeah, Island Walk, 2-2 two, two for 3. When it hits somebody, you search their library, you can cast an artifact from their library. You get somebody's soul ring with that, always. 
dig it. Uh, we have Street Wraith. Always wanted to jam in Commander. Never actually did yet until today. Swamp Walk 3, 4 for 5. Cycling, pay to life. That's why he sees playing Eternal formats, because you just jam four of them, and all of a sudden your deck's 54 cards. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, excellent. How about Shadow Mage Infiltrator? Well, this guy's got fear. He doesn't have walk. He's got fear, which means he can only be blocked by black and artifact creatures. Whenever it deals combat damage to a player, you may draw a card, and he's a 1-3 human wizard for Demir and 1. Or, well, black, blue, 1. Sure. Uh, ooh, I like this one. Mountain Yeti. Dude, look at the price tag on Mountain Yeti. Don't say it's what it is. too damn high. Just don't. Too don't, damn high. Too damn high. Now, what do you think that this card should be worth monetarily? It's a 3-3 three, three for red, red, 2, Mountain Walk, and Protection from White. <laughs> it's got game against the two worst colors, and it's a 4-drop <laughs> for... Th- it's a 3-3 three, three for 4. But it's from Legends, so it's almost five dollars. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that sucks. That's it. Oh, all right. How about Miss Cloaked Herald? Oh, what the fuck? This is not a commander card. This is limited playable at best. A one-one for one cannot be blocked. Moving There's on. There's probably something else we could play. Ickerclawmere. Infect one one for two. When it becomes blocked, it gets plus two plus two. So you can block this one, but it's going to cost you. It's going to cost you a dead creature, or it's going to cost you three minus one minus ones because infect deals damage in the form of minus ones to creatures. Now, Ch- I like this one lots. I've always wanted to play this one myself, but I never have. But here we go with filth, filth, and you got to get the you got to get the one from Judgment. So it's got that little cute tombstone beside the name line. Yes. Yeah. They said two, two for three. That under normal circumstances, we wouldn't ever cast any of the cards in this cycle. But as long as filth is in your graveyard and you control a swamp, creatures you control have swamp walk. So everything's going to walk the swamp ass. It also has swamp walk. Ooh. So this is going to be in this. The same cycle as anger and wonder and brawn and glory and. Genesis? No, Genesis wasn't. Uh, uh, yeah, no, no, not Genesis. Genesis. Yeah, you're right. But that was like that was like the rare version, and it kind of did something else. But it was in the same cycle and set. Anyways, we are gonna cast this card in this deck, where under normal circumstances we would be looking to discard or sacrifice or kill our 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 anger to give our creatures haste. For example, we would be looking to get that into our graveyard. But this one, we want to swing, and I think that this one's got the best picture. Look at that flavor text, too. As the portal closed, filth oozed through the stench of ev- and evil followed it in. That is awesome. Sounds like my butt when I take a poop. That is like Brando post Taco Bell. Yes. After like 10 beer. <laughs> oh, don't Google that either. Uh, the next creature we got is a Chasm Skulker. This is not a, a walker or an unblocker. It's a 1-1 one, one for 3. <clears throat> Whenever you draw a card, put a plus one, plus one counter on it. And when it dies, you get X blue squid creature tokens with island walk. There it is. Equal to the number of plus ones on Chasm Stalker. So you just draw, draw, draw. It gets big, and then you get all your walkers. That's what this is in here for. How about Cairn Wanderer? (laughs) This is also not a walker. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Oh, but it is. All right. But it is. Oh, baby. Four, four for five. Black four. Changeling. So it's all creature types. Fine, whatever. As long as there's a creature with flying in in a, in a graveyard, Cairn Wanderer has flying. The same is true for fear, first strike, double strike, death touch, haste, life gain, protection, reach, trample, shroud, and vigilance, and land walk. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. I You know what? I know that this card gets played and cards like this get played. There's at least two commanders that are like this now, right? Cards in graveyards or you exile them and it gains its abilities. Yeah. But this is the one we're playing, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, it's got a weird naked baby on it. That's Don't Google right? that. Do not Google that. You will actually get in trouble. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's illegal. Don't do that. Uh, we have the one Planeswalker in the deck in Bogart Arsonists. It's too bad we couldn't actually play Graceful Antelope in this deck. We need a five-color walker deck. CCO Nation, get on it. Graceful Antelope, play it. <laughs> 
I think I have a foil <laughs> one. I might have traded it to Smitty, though. Anyways, this is Bogart Arsonist, you said? Yep. A 2-1 Planes Walk for Red 2, and you could pay Red 2, sack it, destroy target, Scarecrow, or Planes. Oh. Sure. That is not? Ter- it's not terrible. Like, you're, you're disadvantaging the color that's already disadvantaged by means of taking away the land it doesn't have. Okay, cool. By, <laughs> by killing its shitty creature? What the hell? Hey, oh, oh, dude, I just forgot. In the notes, I had a game. I had a game. Let's play a game. How many of these creatures have we played or do we currently play? Have we gotten any cards other than the Rexial that you currently play or have played in the past? Uh, Urborg? Oh, yeah, you glossed over that one. <laughs> I've tried Rexial. I play Urborg. I've tried Thada, but I hate searching other people's decks. Street Wraith, eh. I think I might have played that in my Oloro deck just because I'm a troll. <laughs> Iker Claw, I've played in my Infect deck. Chasm Stalker, I mean, everybody plays. That's like a yeah, that's a, that's Chasm a Stalker, real card. Yeah. I played Karn Wanderer in uh, Reaper King, as does everybody. Oh, yeah, that's that works. But other than that, no, this is this is a pile of shit, Ryan. Here's the first pile of shit that I actually am playing in a deck right now. Blister Grub? Blister, mother-ass Blister Grub. A 2-2 two, two for Black 2, Swamp Walk. It's a horror, sure. When Blister Grub dies, each opponent loses two life. <laughs> <laughs> That's in that? Lord of... It's a Lord of Tressor Horn, isn't it? Yeah, guaranteed. Of course it is. Oh, man. Okay, last creature. Oh, sort of. Last creature in the unblockable. These, this is the last creature that we're getting in with with real damage. It is a Blighted Agent. That's a 1-1 one, one unblockable Infector for 2. So that guy's just going to get in there. Sure. I mean, he's an Infector. He gets in. I hate Infectors, but that's fine. That's fine. This isn't my deck, and it's a 1-1, one, one, so I can kill it. Yeah, that's fine. And you know what? There's... There's creatures kind of just smattered wherever in the deck as they fit into the custom category. So I'm going to kind of let you just dictate where we go next. How do you think we want to unfold more of this atrocity? <laughs> uh, let's go. Uh, so we did the creatures. We can look at tricks later. You want to just go to the removal section? Sure, let's get, you know what, let's get removal and ramp out of the way. Let's just, do, and tutors, because there's a few tutors, and then we can do up everything else that makes it really the deck that it is. Okay, so for removal, we have a wasteland, it kills non-basic lands. We have a terminate, that kills a creature. We have a fierce guardianship. Oh, baby, yeah, that, it, if you control your commander, you can cast it for free, a la C20 free commander cards, and yep. then you can counter target non-creature spell. Very powerful card. Very powerful card. One of the most expensive cards in the deck, actually. Oh, yeah. Wow. All right. Uh, we got Fade Away. I like this one. Yeah, this is an old school one from Exodus. This is Ella Brando 1998. Yeah, dude. Or seven or whenever this came out. Okay, so this is Sorcery. Blue 2 for each creature that... For each creature, that creature's controller pays one or sacrifices a permanent... So, so you can good. just start sacrificing things to keep your creatures if you don't have mana. So it it gives you a choice, but it allows you to sacrifice whatever you want. I and, like it. I like this card. And that includes us, right? I think that's why you like it. Yeah. Well, I mean, it. it I just like it because it's cool. I mean, yeah, it's probably going to be one of those choice cards where you never actually get the thing that you're trying to get with it, but it's still pretty cool. And you can really wreck somebody if they have, I don't know, 70 million sapperlings. Right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, round us out with the removal, or did you hit all six? Uh, no, there's a Blasphemous Act. Everybody knows Blasphemous Act. It 13s things, and we have an Aetherize, which returns all attacking creatures to their owner's hands. That's the removal suite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's funny he, he includes a Wasteland in the removal suite, hey? Uh, maybe he plays in a place where there's lots of Maze of Aeths and Gaia's Cradles and yeah. that kind yeah. of stuff. Uh, for ramp, we have an arcane sacred, a cage stun, a chromatic lantern, a crypt gas, a dark ritual, a nightscape familiar, a sol ring, and a wayfarer's bauble. Pretty uh, standard, and I like that nightscape familiar in there in Grixis decks because it makes blue spells and red spells you play cost one less. It's a one one for two zombie. Best part about this card, yeah, yeah, yeah. Best part about the card is it regenerates. 
Yes, yeah, so it's, it's tricky to get rid of, and it's doing. It's going to do work for you. I like those cards that just make your spells cost less. I think yeah. that they're just not appreciated that they should be. Yeah. Um, you know what? If you're looking to cast multiple spells in a turn, and we are <laughs> always <laughs> in Commander, that's how, that, that's kind of how you win games, is being the first person to 2x your average converted mana cost. So you can start to, on average, cast two spells per turn or more. These cards are going to net you lots and lots of mana throughout the course of games. Now, th- there is another ramp section. It's a ramp engine. And just like last week, I don't think it works the way McLift thinks it works. Oh, no. In that we have the prototype portal, which is an imprint where when it comes into play, you exile an artifact from your hand. Then you play X and tap it. You get a token that is a copy of the exiled artifact. Uh, and X is the converted mana cost of the artifact. And then he has a bunch of zero-costed artifacts like... Vault of Whispers, Seed of the Synod, Mox, or sorry, Mox, Lotus Petal, Great Furnace, Dark Steel Citadel, and Chrome Mox. But he also has a Lotus Bloom and a Mox Tantalite, which, as we talked about last week, doesn't work like this because it doesn't have a mana cost to pay X for, so you can't pay the X to get a copy off of the prototype portal. Oh, wow, there you go, two weeks. Was that last week? Man, that feels like a long time ago. <laughs> I think that was last week, and I'm, pr- I'm sure that's how that worked, because it doesn't come from your hand, and you can only pay suspend from your hand, and since there is no mana cost, and you're not paying it for free, you can't actually pay for it. Yes, we did spend some time. Whenever that was, we spent time to look up that rule. Now, for the rest of everything else... You can get a token that's a copy of the exiled card onto the battlefield where X is that card's converted mana cost. And the imprint is just exile an artifact card. It doesn't say non-land artifact card. So you can make copies of your Great Furnace, Dark Steel Citadel, what have you. Now, what about your Chrome Mox? When it enters the battlefield, you may remove a non-artifact, non-land card from your hand from the game. That's an enter the battlefield thing. So when a token copy of that would enter the battlefield, you'd still have to do it, right? And then you'd get a mana of any color that the imprinted card could, uh, any mana, a mana of any color of the imprinted card. Yeah, I don't know if we want to, do we want to do that? That just, that doesn't seem very good. Well, it depends on how many cards we're drawn, I think. Like, do we want to discard a card every turn to essentially get a, get another artifact land? Maybe we only want to do that once. Maybe we want to do that late game. Well, if you're only going to do it once, why don't you just play the Chrome Mox? It's free. Yeah, or play a land. Yeah, or play a land or something. I don't know, like maybe you want to put them in and then not put anything on it and then blow it up with something else. I don't know. I don't know. Okay, well, if we have any suggestions by the end, maybe the Chrome Mox is what we cut. Maybe, well, no, I mean the Mox Tantalite and the... the well, Lotus, Lotus Bloom, Bloom would be the ones we cut first, probably. Yeah, yeah, cut them right now. And just like the other week, just get a, what is it, a Lion's Eye Diamond and a Mox Diamond. Oh, boom. Easy. That's that's all you need to do. Yep, that's yeah, it. Boom, that's it. boom, headshot. It's right there. You know what? When we look at the budget section, we'll actually talk about that again because there's a lot of, in this deck, I think there's a lot of, hey, I had these cards, so I'm putting them in. <laughs> yes. All right, let's go to the let's do the tutors quick. Uh, we played War of Invention last week. That's great. That's blue, blue, blue X. It's a court of calling essentially, uh, where you pay X. You can search your library for an artifact card with converted mana cost X or less. Put it into play shelf of your library. It has improvise. You can tap artifacts to pay for the X. We have a final parting, which searches your library for two cards: one to hand, one to the bin. Love that your- card. Or your other hand, that is a good ass card. So you get the card that you want to have Swamp Walk and Filth, and Filth goes into your yard and your other creatures into your hand. It's flawless. Uh, we're gonna fabricate, finds an artifact, and we have a Diabolic Tutor. That's for four mana, finds any card. Find sweet when we're playing some of the the very niche win conditions that we are. I think that tutors to find those things as long as you're not playing this deck. Every night, every single game, finding the same card every time, I think that that's fine. Yeah, I think that that's totally okay. And I, the deck is clunky enough where I think that it's fine. Yeah, you know what? Very reminiscent of, and we already talked about it real quick, my Lord of Tressorhorn deck that is a Grixis deck. It does run Final Parting. It does have some, with the Commander, other two-card win cons 
provided I have my commander, right? And the deck is playing Blister Grub. It's clunky enough that just going out and finding my win con if I happen to draw a tutor, I think is appropriate because there's no real fast big mana ramp in the deck. So I couldn't even, you know, with the god hand and the tutor and playing my commander, I can't even do it on turn four or five. Like it's got to be on turn six or seven at the very earliest, right? So that's, that's yeah, fine. Somebody should have an erection for you by then. Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. All right, let's look at some of the draw cards. There's some that are, man, there's some that are actually pretty cool. We'll start with a really cool one in Sire of Stagnation. Yeah, this is Consecrated Eldrazi. That's what I've talked about this card as before. At six mana, I can understand why people would be a little bit soft on it, but I don't know why more people aren't playing this card. This is a 5 7 Eldrazi Devoid for black, blue, four. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under an opponent's control. Not when they play a land, whenever they fucking just get one. That's why this is powerful, because, like, cultivate, play extra lands, far seek, rampant growth, just getting fetch lands. lands. Fetch lands? Oh, fetch lands? When they get a land, that player exiles the top two cards of their library, and we draw two cards. Oh. Can you imagine, like, opponent has been, like, waiting and waiting and waiting. Like, they missed land land drop five and six or whatever, and we drop our Sire of Stagnation. And the land that they need so they can play their commander is a fucking Arid Mesa. And it's like, land. Okay, mill two, I'll draw two. Oh, I gotta crack my Arid Mesa to find a planes. Oh, okay, get, get your planes. Mill two, I'll draw two. We draw four cards off of a fetch land. That's pretty good. Yeah, this card is hella powerful. Yeah, man. Uh, we got Live Fast, Fevered Visions, Read the Bones, Pilfered Plans. Those are all different versions of pay some mana, take some damage, mill some cards, draw two. Uh, we've got Phyrexian Arena. Do we all know Phyrexian Arena? Yeah, I just want to talk about Fevered Visions real quick. Is that That's different than like the Read the Bones and Live Fast and Phyrexian Arena. This is at the beginning of each player's end step. That player draws a card, and then if they have four or more cards in their hand, they take two. Is this just... This is just like Phyrexian Arena, but in is it colors, right? And for everybody, I should say. For everybody. Hmm. That's Yes, fun. that's true. It's, it's a cool card. And we've got Loyal Drake, which is the lieutenant from... Was it last year? That is the lieutenant from Commander 19, yes. So it's a 2-2-4-3 two, two, with flying at the beginning of combat on your turn. If you control your commander, you draw a card. That card is surprisingly powerful and will get you lots of cards. That card sees play in CEDH. Yeah, I play it in... I only have de like two or three decks that play blue, and I play Loyal Drake in all of them. Oh, so there you go. It's it's a good-ass card. I like it a lot. Where should we go to next, Ryan? we got a Voltron section. we got a... Play you know what? The, sort of for free yeah. section. <laughs> yeah, there's a there, the custom categories is taken to the nines in here because it's like, oh, there's a category with, you know, five cards in it. There's a category with two cards. There's a, a category with one card in it. <laughs> oh, the one card one, that's recursion. And the recursion card is a buried ruin, which is a land that taps for one or tap to it, sack it, return target artifact card from your graveyard to your hand. Yeah, you know what? I see a lot of artifact stuff in here reminiscent of last week, and I'm thinking, like, what are we getting? What are we getting back? Like, the free play, the combo section, the the other combo section. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I, th I think we're getting the Voltron section. That's what we're tutoring for. So maybe we hit up those eight cards and we'll finish out with the, the free stuff and the combo stuff that represent maybe the alternate win cons. We'll finish out with those. Sure. Uh, we'll start with something. It's a part of a cycle that I really like. It's the Ring of Volcus. Yeah, this is the Ring of Cycle from M13. So getting pretty old, but there was one of these for each color. And this is the one that is red, right? Or yep. supposed to represent red. So it's a two-drop equipment. It equips for one. Equipped creature has haste, so that's cool. You have one mana tax on top of whatever you're casting to give it haste, right? Yeah. At the beginning of your upkeep, put a plus one, plus one counter on equipped creature if it's red. And if it's... Sol <laughs> What's his name? Salkanar Swamp Ass King? He's red, so he's going to get bigger. And he has Swamp Walk, so that's cool. I dig that. Uh, we got Prying Blade. Equipment for one, 
It equips for two. Equipped creature gets plus one, plus oh. Whenever equipped creature deals combat damage to a player, you get a treasure token. I don't know why that's in the Voltron section. It doesn't really... Maybe he meant it to be a, uh, what is it, a sword of war and peace. I'm sure mm. war and peace is the one that you play, right? I'm sure that any sword of anything and anything is better than prying blade, but this is where we are. <laughs> it is where we have ended up. Uh, we've got an octopus umbra. I like this one. Oh, yeah. I love seeing just funky includes like this. Just like, my commander's an 8-8 with totem armor now. End of yeah. story. <laughs> and then I'm yeah. going to equip it. So it, it makes your enchanted creature base power and toughness 8-8. Gives it totem armor for 5 mana. That means if it would be destroyed or or receive lethal damage, you just remove all damage and it isn't destroyed. And you sacrifice the the aura that's on it. It's like a second life. Yes, and also, uh, when this attacks, you can tap any target creature with power 8 or less. Oh, yeah, it just grabs it with its legs. Yeah, you just you tentacle it. So, I've always wondered about that, because octopuses always have those abilities where they can, like, tap things. But then how do they do damage? Do they grab onto all those things, thus immobilizing them, and then pull forward really, really hard with their eight legs and headbutt something? Is that what they're doing? I was going to suggest headbutt, yes. Headbutt is one. Squeezing is another. You could do eight damage worth of squeeze. I suppose. But they're squeezing the creature, not the player, right? So I don't know if that really makes sense mechanically. Maybe they swing them around by their feet and use the thing that it's squeezing as a club. Oh, yeah, there we go. That's, That's it. We figured it out. We yeah, well, that's how they would do it in this deck anyways, because Saul Kanar's got that club, and they're just trying to emulate kind of his example, right? I like that. I like yeah. it. Okay. Uh, all right, speaking of things you can swing around like a club, how about a Loxed on Warhammer? Oh, I thought you were going to say that elephant's trunk. <laughs> 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 this is an, uh, uh, what, what is this? This is an equipment for three. It equips for three, so that's pretty hefty. Six mana before you can do anything. But plus three, trample, and... Deals damage, you gain that much life. Not lifelink, not lifelink, but deals damage, gain that much life. If you have multiple Loxodon Warhammers, you gain multiple instances of life. And if you put Loxodon Warhammer on a creature with lifelink, you gain multiple ad instances of life. So this would be a cool card to put on your, uh, uh, what was that thing, the, the prototype portal. We could just have a whole oh, bunch of... Oh, yeah, there uh, you go. That would work. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, that's pretty mana intensive, but hell, like, you, if you have a 40-40 that gains you 207 life every time you hit somebody with it, it's worth it. Yeah, math checks out. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then we got a, a Haunted Cloak. Oh, man, this is one of those really top-down flavor designs from Innistrad, right? From the plane of Innistrad, I should say. Sure. Three drop equipment, equips for one. Equip creature has Vige trample and haste everything's given haste that seems to be important well haste is important if you're going to voltron because if you want to play it and then try and wheel the table you're going to get your butthole punched yeah haste is important with our next card Man, i'm going to take a chance to do an aside here i watched a movie before i came to record which i usually do it's called the society and i am not i, I shit you not ryan they cannibalized this kid, these weird, like, alien rich people, and the lead rich person punched a guy in his butt, and then his hand went up into the dude's mouth, and he poked his eyes out from the inside. Is that real? I've heard a lot about it. Like, this is a new movie that people are watching, right? This is not a Brando movie from, like, 1986? No, this is a Brando movie from 1996. Oh. <laughs> oh, so it's like the graphics have to be twice as good, right? Oh, yeah, they're they very good. They definitely look kind of like a Super Nintendo game, but hey, it's worth it. It was funny, but to, I wasn't expecting to see that because it's like this high school kind of thriller mystery people going missing, and it's just, oh, yeah, it's alien blobs that are fisting people's assholes and poking their eyes out. Just weird. And then eating their hair. That I Let's t let's talk about the next card. Oh, there's so many things that I have to just tell everybody not to Google. <laughs> Start with the Society. It's a hell of a movie. Uh, we got a grafted exoskeleton. This Ryan. is grafted th exoskeleton. This is it. This is why we need haste. This is it, baby. Four drop equipment equips for two. So again, all in cost of six. Equip creature gets plus two, plus two, and has infect. 
Uh oh. If it becomes unequipped, you have to sacrifice the creature, which is fine. All of all of the things that have grafted prefix in front of their equipment name, when they become unequipped, they kill you. Which is yeah. fine. I don't care. You know what's cool about this card? You get this plus two, plus two, which is a little bit weird. Like, m- mostly you only ever see this card used on the offensive, but Grafted out Exoskeleton makes a hell of a blocker. It, it is tricky. to it's, it's scary to attack into something that has at least three toughness, three power, and is going to wreck up the creature that it blocks. That damage is permanent-ish. Yeah, we call it permanent. That's fine. Uh, next up, we got a Forge of Heroes. That's a land. Yeah, choose target commander that entered the battlefield this turn. Put a plus one, plus one counter on it. If it's a creature, put a loyalty on it if it's a planeswalker. So when Swamp Ass comes onto the battlefield, we can pay an extra land. It's like paying that extra premium to give him haste. This is an extra premium to make him a 6-6 six, six when he enters the battlefield with Swamp Walk. I tried so hard to make this good in my Wind Grace deck, and it just couldn't get there it seems like it uh, you know what i play the one i play the one in estrid the bald that if you use the mana to cast a planeswalker you gain a life this one's probably better <laughs> I, should pre- <laughs> I should play this one <laughs> but uh, uh hey we uh we do play bad cards so our last voltron card is a card that we have talked about earlier and an art ish we have talked about earlier it is a weird naked baby on anger yeah, this is another haster. If it's in your graveyard and you control a mountain, creatures you control have haste. It's an incarnation. It's got the little swamp from, or sorry, it's got the little tombstone from Judgment. And if you were to cast it, it's red three. This is the other thing that you can find with your final parting, where you can just put it directly into your graveyard. I dig it. So I'm, I'm, I'm into this. Those are the Voltron enablers. That's going to allow us to swing faster, big, bigger, harder. But we've got... A couple tricks, a couple combo pieces, and a couple free casters. So, like, do you want to just hit up the free casters real quick? Or the free players, I guess, is is the category? Yes, let's do that. We'll start with Silent Blade Oni. So this is ninjutsu. When, when something attacks and isn't blocked, you can ninjutsu this in for six. And when it deals combat damage to a player, look at that player's hand and you can cast a non-land card from it without paying its mana cost so you can get something for free cool your stuff's gonna get in because it all has land walk got it yes yeah, that's, that's a good one uh relentless salt Ooh, untap all creatures get an extra combat phase we can do everything that we ever talk about twice with this card because we're always gonna get in infect or draw cards or silent blade oni we're always gonna get it and we're gonna get it twice with this card i Oh, I forgot that this card existed, this next one. I 100% forgot about it, and I feel bad. Prince of Thralls. Listen to this mana cost. This is red, black, black, blue, four. (laughs) Seven, seven demon. When a permanent and opponent controls is put into the graveyard, put that card into play under your control unless that opponent pays three life. So, like, you could, on a on a battlefield full of creatures how do we leave this how do we make this stay alive after a blasphemous act can we do that uh that's what i want to do well if you leave it equipped with that ring for long enough (laughs) i suppose it is red (laughs) um i don't know but i mean this would be really cool with that removal spell we talked about fade away where they're paying mana or sacking permanent. Now they're paying life when they sack permanents or, or you get them. Oh, yeah. So, that's a good little synergy. I like it, that for it's sure. It's a cool card. I like him lots. And I I can't remember the last time I even thought about it. Yeah. Uh, next up, we have Karn's Temporal Sundering. Okay. This is a legendary sorcery. So you can only cast it if you control a legendary permanent. Creature or Planeswalker, sorry. You take an extra turn after this one and return up to... One target non-land permanent to its owner's hand, and then you exile it. So you can use it as removal, so you can get a blocker out of the way on your extra turn, or you can maybe bounce your Silent Blade Oni, so you can ninjutsu it in again next turn, stuff like that. Dig it. Yeah. And the last one is Deny Reality. Another card I've always wanted to play because it has Cascade and it's five mana, so you can Cascade into your four, three, two, one, or zero drops. And you return target permanent to its owner's hand. Always useful. 
I guess. I don't know. I just, I don't know. Yeah, it's the unsummon the, for or it's boomerang for five. And yeah, you get something for free. I get that, but whatever. The rate's not there on boomerang, but if you build your deck right, you can you can get there. I suppose. Uh, here's some tricks. Let's talk about some of the tricksy stuff that we're doing. Yeah. We oh the... man. Th- yes, I love these cards. I love I love all three of these cards. Yes, these are all very good. Uh, Night creep. Okay, this is an instant for black, black. Until end of turn, all creatures become black and all lands become swamps. So that's instant speed. All my guys have swamp walk. Die. That's like reverse fog. <laughs> Unless they have fog. <laughs> oh, yes. In which case, it's like, ah, <laughs> damn it. Next card. Demonic dread. Okay, sorcery. I wish it was an instant, but it's a sorcery. Target creature can't block this turn. So if there is an instance of, you know, we can't get through or or what have you, this makes it so we can, but it also has Cascade. So you'll get something. Maybe you'll get your Night Creep. There it is. All right, and the last one is Cauldron Dance. I like this card. This is an instant. Originally printed in Invasion. Get them Invasion foils. I'm telling you, they're beautiful. Red, black, four, instant. You can only cast it during combat. Okay, who cares? Return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. That creature gains haste. Then return it to your hand at the beginning of the next end step. You may put a creature card from your hand onto the battlefield. It gains haste. And then you sacrifice it at the end of or the beginning of the next end step. So you're taking creature from graveyard to play, hand to play. And then you put them in the opposite location at the end of all things. So you're kind of so swapping them. Yeah. But in the middle of the swap, they stop in and pound for a while. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they show up to party and then they yeah that's that's awesome I like that yeah uh, so there's two combos in the deck one of which I think could be made slightly more resilient and the other one is one that I used to play way back in the day which one do you want to go with first oh dude we you know what we gotta save the one that has cards from the dark best for last okay all right combo number two is the one we will do first we have. Harmless Offering and Demonic Pact. So Harmless Offering, Sorcery, Target Creature Gains, Control of Target Permanent, you control. Okay, so we're going to give away a Demonic Pact, which is a enchantment for four. At the beginning of your upkeep, choose one that hasn't been chosen. Demonic Pact deals four damage target creature or player. We gain four life. Cool, we'll choose that. Next, target opponent discards two cards. We'll choose that. Cool. Draw two cards. We'll choose that. And then we'll give it away because the last one that hasn't been chosen yet is you lose the game. (laughs) (laughs) So harmless offering slash donate combos have been around since Ice Age with uh, Ice Age and Illusions of Grand or sorry, donate proper and Illusions of Grandeur, right? That was originally printed in Alliances actually, I think. Yeah. And, I mean, we're still doing it today in 2020, so we've come full circle. Combo number one. We're doing it as combo number two. I like this one. It's uh, Merfolk Assassin and War Barge. If you don't know what those cards are... And why would you? Exactly. Why would you? They're both, both from the dark, and they both don't even total... A dollar (laughs) fifty. So War Barge is an artifact for four. Look at that dark four mana cost on that that dark card too. You can pay three mana. Target creature gains island walk until end of turn. So it's doing something that we already want to do in giving land walk. So it fits into the deck nicely. Great. If War Barge leaves the battlefield, target creature is killed. Sacrifice. Who cares? Yeah, it's, important. it's not destroyed. It's sacrificed because the boat because yes. the boat sinks. That's the flavor. Oh, okay, I got gotcha. you. Now we combo that with Merfolk Assassin. Tap destroy target creature with Island Walk. It's <laughs> <laughs> not even good. Oh man, it's blue blue for a one two taps to destroy an Island Walker, and we can give stuff Island Walk. We can give our own stuff Island Walk to punch in. We can give our own. We can kill our own Rexiel. So then we can we can uh, fucking cauldron dance it back to our hand. 
cauldron dance it back to our hand or cauldron dance it back from the graveyard and give it haste. <laughs> <laughs> you know what you can do? Cast cauldron dance only during combat. So pretend you have your your Rexiel and he's tapped because he already attacked. You can merfolk assassin it to death and then cauldron dance during your opponent's upkeep to get him back from your graveyard <laughs> <laughs> and he can block with him. <laughs> That's how you cast Cauldron Dance there right there. So that's the combo. You can kill creatures with Island Walk, and War Barge gives them I- Island Walk. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> that's the deck, too. man. That is the deck. And you know what? Just quickly, we've got some strengths and weaknesses. More uh, weaknesses than strengths, but you know what? This is the arc of good vibes, and we want to focus on the positive. Yes. So first strength can combo kill. <laughs> uh, uh, and nor- normally we're like, oh, it can combo kill, whatever. But in a deck like this, that's like a pile of actual flaming garbage, being able to combo kill somebody feels pretty good. And you know what? Just so everybody is is aware, and for anybody else out in listener land that isn't part of CCO Nation yet, F you and calling somebody's deck a pile of flaming garbage is a term of endearment. If somebody sat, if Cam Girl McLift sat down with this deck and said, here's my Grixis deck, and I said, here's my Lord of Tressorhorn Grixis deck, and we swap decks, that would be a scenario, that would be a, a timeline that I want to live in, because yeah. I love playing decks like this. Hey, we wouldn't be talking about it on the show if we actually thought it sucked, right? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> or if it was just another Atraxa something something list. Yeah, who, who would talk about Atraxa decks? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So that, that kind of leads into our next strength, is it is jank. And from a political standpoint, you will you will gain political favor for playing like bad cards. Oh, that's not a threat. And people will leave you alone. And then it's like all of a sudden, oh, here's my Landwalker. Here's my pump spell. Here's my infect. You just die. Yes. And that's some shit. And and killing people with bad cards is awesome. Oh, dude, it is the best, especially when they're really pretentious and they're like, oh, this is my all foil, you know, whatever deck. Here's my hundred dollar foil. This is 10 X foil multiplier. This is my coolest deck, right? I got this Iker Claw mirror. I sat on it. It's got a fold in it. Die. <laughs> Here's this card that I bit with Brando's <laughs> dog. <laughs> Die. Yeah, it's it's perfect. Die. It's a, it's great in that way. Yeah. Playing stuff like this is very EDH. I don't know if that was a, a, a strength that you had down, but this is a very classic EDH deck where we're just playing a bunch of cards that we have that sort of work together. And it creates this great thing. Yeah, you know what? I did the next strength down on the notes was classic EDH. And exactly what you said. Stuff that you have, fun stuff that you like, and stuff that is just going to be so out there that people just have to read and they say, oh, that's bad. And then then you kill them with it. Yes. I think one of the, the most fun things that I have when I play Commander, or EDH as I like to call it, is... When you play a card and everybody at the table has to read it. And they're like, what the hell? I love that. And like War Barge is totally one of those cards. You're never going to resolve a War Barge and have somebody at the table, everybody at the table be like, yeah, War Barge, CDH staple. Like, you know what I mean? (laughs) It's awesome. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this deck does actually have a pretty stout mana base like there's duels in like classic og duels probably got them at the same time you got the war bard <laughs> there's like original fetch lands and stuff and one of the weaknesses is in decks like this where you might need like sulkanar swamp king mana on you know turn whatever and then prince of thralls mana the next turn or you know like black 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 on one turn then red red blue on the next like it does behoove us in bad decks that have tough mana costs like that to play really expensive lands. And a weakness is having to sacrifice those expensive lands to make the deck budget. Yeah. Because yeah. not including fetch, or sorry, not including dual lands, the, the bad lands and the underground sea that are in here. And the Volcanic Island. And the, oh, the Volcanic Island too. The deck clocks in at 550 bucks, And that's largely due to Polluted Delta, Bloodstained Mire, Flooded Strand, Watery Grave, Wasteland. The Fierce Guardianship, like I said, is is new. So like you might have you might have that if you bought a Commander 2020 pre-con. But if you don't... That's big money. You might as well go out and buy the pre-con because there's lots of good cards in there. 
Yeah, that's actually good advice. Like if the if the card itself costs almost forty dollars and you can get the pre con for fifty plus like ninety nine other cards for ten bucks, that's a pretty good deal. Yeah. All of those free ones I think the red one and the blue one at least are worth some some dollarage that are worth picking up the the deck because there's lots of stuff in there that you're probably going to play with yeah and you know what the the decks them or sorry the commanders themselves in the deck have such a wide range of play not only in build paths that you can take but you can go Calamax, for example, is so terrible when like the way that me and CCO Nation built it with vehicles, but it also runs the gambit all the way to like extra turns CEDH Calamax. Like that's a good card. Yeah. And so does the cycling one that lets you cast for free. Yep. Or cycle for free. Right. Yep. So both good cards. Anyways, you take out all those cards, you swap out the foil Thada Adele for a regular Thada Adele. You're gonna save fifteen more bucks. That's a place that I found to save. You could dump the chrome mocks at 70 bucks. Oh, yeah, you could dump the chrome mocks if you kind of didn't want to do that artifact ramp package. Like, whatever. Include a, you know, a commander sphere, whatever three drop mana rock we're not playing to help you cast your commander like one turn sooner. Yeah, and we could dump the mox tantalite for a sol ring. We could dump the lotus bloom for a arcane signet. If you dump, you know what? I didn't count. Th- any of the moxes, including the $70 chrome mox, I just dumped the the fetches, fierce guardianship, foil thada. That's going to save 217 bucks. You could make that almost, you could make that $300 in savings. You know, if you dump the mox tantalite and the, the lotus bloom as well, you're looking at $350 in savings. You're looking at a $200 deck. And that's going to be draft chaff, commons, shit that you have, and stuff that you can get from commander precons. Yeah, stuff that pe- stuff that people will probably just like give you. Yeah, that's a that's a good that's a good price. That's a good deck for yeah. a good price. It's going to be fun and it's going to have a ton 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 of replay value. This is one of those decks that you can actually get with the with your binder chaff because it's for other people's binder chaff, right? Like you have those rares that people sort of want, but they're throw-ins on trades or whatever. But you're actually getting stuff for a deck that you want to play that's really cool for stuff that nobody actually wants. <laughs> huh. so spice calculator spice calculator this is it now soul Kanar the swamp king 49 decks on edhrec.com as of this recording that make him one of the worst of all it's the fifth lowest on the list that puts him right above our boy silas wren jock jock strap seeker adept from last week who partners with Ludovic, I forgot about him, Alchemist. And right below, Silas Wren, Jock Scra- Jockstrap Seeker Adept, and Vile Smasher. Oh, wow. So he's down okay. there in the he's down there in the dregs with the frickin' partners. Ooh. He's down in great company. Great company. Right below Gwendolyn de Corsi. Ooh. <laughs> so you know what? The deck doesn't actually look bad on paper. Average CMC. 3.35 so a little bit below where we see average commander at but again that 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 average cmc and casual commanders trending downwards as people are favoring you know ramp and efficient interaction yeah damn it four tutors in the list but again we talked we, we touched on it right yeah you, you gotta have them and yeah it's gonna hurt you but here we are if you're if you're tutoring for a war barge you know what? Do we even count that as a tutor? <laughs> <laughs> there is four, but you know what I found the most shocking was th- the difference between our swamp walk swamp ass deck and the average list edhrec.com. It was a Grixis wheel good stuff deck. There's lots of wheels like Wheel of Fortune, there was like Yogmoth's Wheel and of course all the Grixis staples like you know the rifts and stuff. It just looked like a a good stuff deck, right? And not in CCO Nation, sorry. No, that's not what we play here. So, 49 different cards in this deck different than the average stock page for Salkanar the Swamp King on edhrec.com. Oh, baby. That's like every card. We're not even playing Sol Ring in this deck. And <laughs> you hit it on the head like, why aren't we playing Sol Ring? We're playing Sol Kanar. Yeah, I was like, is that his ring? It might be. It, there, it has to be. Dude, wouldn't that be sick? If the Sol in Sol Ring was Sol Kanar the Swamp King? Yeah. That sounds like oh, an altar. I think there needs to be a Sol Kanar ring altar. 
do it. There it is. So Ooh. new auctions every Thursday on our Facebook page. Boom, there it is. There <laughs> it is. <laughs> you punch it all into the spice calculator. Those four tutors do hurt us, but we're still cranking out almost a 43 flat. That is a 42.96 on the spicy. That's pretty good. That's fine. You know what? If we count tutoring for War Barge and tutoring for Merfolk Assassin, we take those two tutors out, 53. Excellent. There we we got there. We always figure a way to get it there, Ryan. Oh yeah, hundred percent. We 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 do it all for CCO Nation. <laughs> <laughs> don't Google, don't Google that. That's no. <laughs> So that's the deck, Cam Girl McLift. Huge thanks for sending it in. It popped up on the preferred. I can never say it. Preferred deck list Discord channel, and I I clicked it immediately. I was like, "What the fuck is this?" And it was just like, "Oh, there it is." And we had to do it. So huge thanks for sending it in. We we do appreciate them. We look at all of them, and I mean, as long as things keep go- going, we're probably gonna do all of them. Oh, hey, do you have a good vibe this week? I know I, t- I know I touched on staying, focusing on the positives. You got a good vibe? Uh, You've been on holidays all week. Yeah, I've been on holidays all week. I got lots of stuff done. Uh, I managed, I did my very first non-thing uh, opening for my YouTube channel. That'll be up next week if anybody's interested in watching that. I'm not going to tell anybody what it was, but I was really nervous about it, so it took me a super long time to record that, so I feel good that I got over my nerves. Uh, there it is. I, that hey, that's important. Getting getting kind of getting out again, right? Yeah. And, uh, um, ooh, went to the dentist, and I have no cavities. That's, that's good. good. Uh, I have to get a wisdom tooth pulled though, so that's not the best. But looking at the positive side of that, it's going to give me a day off of work. Woohoo! So hell yeah, man. That's awesome. I've I've been having a good week. The weather has been cooperating. I got lots of work done in my garden and in my yard. So it's it it, it finally feels kind of like summer for me. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, I I had a bear destroy the garbage. If you watched the pre-show, you saw the garbage can. But it's all cleaned <laughs> up. We've been at the lake all week. Rebecca's on holidays all next week. So we finally have some really nice weather. And I just can't wait to actually enjoy summer in my yard. And just be at the lake for a couple more days. Drink a whole ton of beer. They didn't have, you know, the Moosehead Light Lime that I like. So I bought Moosehead and I bought Lime. And I made my fucking own. <laughs> Gross, man. That's, that's the most PA thing I've ever heard, man. Oh, man, that's great. And, oh, you know what I was going to say, too, of Brando Does Stuff? There's links to mine and Brando's solo projects in the show notes for all of all of our episodes. So anywhere you find Commander Cookout, you can find Brando Does Stuff on YouTube, and you can also find Commander Ad Populum, the podcast. So you can you can find links to those on any of our CCO content. We everywhere. So that's it. Check us out. We're working hard for for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. it. So I don't, final thought of the day. What do you think? Final thought of the day. I think it's a beautiful day. I hope it is wherever you are as well. And it remain. This weather stays with us, and we can gift it to you. This deck was super fun. Very classic EDH. Thank you very much to McLiff for sending it in. We really do enjoy these. Some people put it together on a budget, and they can wreck their friends with some really bad cards. Because that's at the end of the day why we even have a show is wrecking people with bad cards. <laughs> So good on you, McLift. Keep them coming to everybody else. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for having us in your ear holes and your eye holes and any other holes that you invite us into. Thanks to face2facegames.com. They're Canada's biggest magic store, and they help keep, help us keep the lights on. Keep sending your decks in, because we're going to keep doing these decks for as long as we have to in the arc of good vibes on the next episode of Commander Cookout Podcast. Hit our theme song! Ooh. Fuck yeah.